The weekend of June 17 and 18 was quite unusual on my end, in the sense that it involved both good and bad things. There were constantly changing plans throughout the trip, not helped by the unreliable commuter trains on Saturday. You see, the morning to Huia service, with DFB's 7077 and 7335, got stuck on the Onehunga branch junction at Penrose that morning, disrupting Onehunga and Papakura services for pretty much the rest of the day. This was certainly not the first time Te Huia had had a major service disruption recently, and if this mess isn't sorted out, I'm worried about the service's future. By the time AM497 finally got to Popokudra, she was nine minutes late. The long section from Penrose to Newmarket was temporarily down to single track running. Make of that what you will. I had originally planned to get off at Papa Toe Toe and do some rail fanning there. But I didn't want to risk being stranded there when the AMs were falling behind in punctuality. Instead, I just got off at Newmarket, by which time AM 497 was now running 15 minutes late. Four minutes later, AM578 showed up on a Swanson service. This unit was recently done up in an advertising livery for pointlessly abridged Vodafone. Then I popped round to the nearby Merv Smith Hobbies shop and bought a Hornby model of the first bullied Pacific. It's Merchant Navy class number 21C1 channel packet. After returning to the station, I caught DFB 7077 hauling the empty Tehuya coaches and a classmate 7335 back to the strand. This was followed by going out to Avondale aboard AM849, but I stupidly forgot to record her arrival at Newmarket. Unlike the Onehunga and Papakura services, the Swanson trains were pretty much still running as normal, albeit with a few delays.
The next morning, it was time to head over to Motat, as they were hosting their Live Day event once again. I got there just in time to see X Wellington Fiducia tram number 257 heading out for her first run of the day. This thing was built in 1950 and ran on the streets of New Zealand's capital city until 1964, when the last few remaining tram lines were closed in favour of buses. Fortunately, 257 is not the only fiducia in preservation. Classmates 238, 239 and 260 are preserved at the Wellington Tramway Museum, way down at Queen Elizabeth Park on the Kapiti coast. Last time I visited the museum was in October 2022, but instead of the fiducias, they were actually running double saloon number 159. 159 is actually very similar to 135, which is also preserved at Motat. Baldwin Steam Tram number 100 is a staple of the live days. She was built in 1891, originally for the Australian city of Sydney. Then, in 1910, she was transferred to Huanganui, and in 1920 she helped run an emergency relief service during a massive power cut. If my research is correct, she has been preserved in Motat since 1971, and now she is an impressive 132 years old. X Melbourne W2 class number 321 was in operation yet again. For nostalgic and other personal reasons, this is my personal favourite member of Motat's tram fleet.
I decided to get on 257 for a ride up to Motat 2, where I would then find Y542 in steam on the Western Springs Railway. This ex-Wellington tram was effectively running in tandem with Baldwin 100. The sun had finally come back out by the time 100 and 257 reached the end of the line. I had originally planned to go for a ride behind Y542, but I ran out of time and just got footage from the line side instead.
The museum wasn't running as elaborative an operation as they did back in May, when they also had F-180 and L-507 in steam. But I was still happy to see at least one steam locomotive running on June 18. I got back to the tram station just in time to hitch a ride back to Motat 1 aboard the venerable Auckland four-wheeler number 44.
And this was the last tram I filmed, or rather, the last thing I filmed in Auckland at all, before heading home. I hope you've at least found this video interesting, and I highly recommend visiting Motat and their tram line if you haven't already done so.